So I had a snack and uh, needed a quick break, stretch break. Here we go. So uh, while we're on the subject of the Kelvin timeline, uh, wow, that is a big box. I'm honestly, I'm surprised. Arguably my biggest purchase, biggest single purchase from Eagle Moss. Wow, that's a heavy box. Surprisingly heavy. That sound concerns me. There's an oh so slight tink, like the tink of plastic or the tink of metal in here. So, while I was at it, um, I decided to get something else from the Kelvin timeline because I feel like a rebel right now. Uh, and this I have not done before. This is a first for me, or at least, at least in terms of Eagle Moss uh, purchases. And that is a four-pack of shuttles specifically from the Kelvin timeline. All of these are listed as being from the 2009 movie, so nothing from Into Dankness and nothing from Beyond. What am I talking about? There are no shuttles in Into in Beyond. Uh, so, yeah. So this, this is a new one for me. Wait, do they have... No, okay. Nothing there. More of same. More of same. And the back has some legalese stuff on it, so... Huh, these were made in 2018. Yeah, that makes sense. By the way, I also got these on sale as well. I got these on sale for $80. Just shy of $80. So, yeah. Uh, ordinarily, ordinarily, they're 100 or 110 something like that. So, these were also on discount, so... Yay. Um, I was not opposed to the shuttle designs from 2009. I, actually, I like the, the nice variety of shuttles, but uh, just because they use them so little, uh, I'd like to see them up close and in detail. So I got this. I wonder if these are any different from those shuttles that appear on the Kelvin herself. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Eagle Moss has made multiple uh, shuttle uh, sets like this, so, um, oh, hello, how does this work? Oh, they are individual, oh, those are tiny, wow, <laughs> okay, I thought they'd be a lot bigger than this, oops, okay, so, anyways, uh, it's a four pack, we've got a shuttle, and we've got a shuttle, so they do come as, uh, oh, what's this, what's this, oh, Individual mini mags. Excellent. Good. I was I was wondering if it was like, are they all going to be in one big one or one little one? I'm not sure. And we've got a shuttle. And wait, there's only three there. Okay. And then we have a shuttle. Wow, those are a lot smaller. I, like, I know they're shuttles, but I thought they would be bigger than they ended up being. That's surprising. Hmm. Okay. Well, I've never I've never purchased a shuttle before, so I, I just assumed that they would be the same size as the, you know, standard size ships, like the Emmet. I just assumed, or SS Emmet. I just assumed they'd be the same size as this. <laughs> the dust is starting to build up because it's in a bad spot. Uh, yeah, I, ju I just assumed all the shuttles would be this size, but they're like half, half the size of this, and this this is actually pretty small from my perspective, this is only three, three and a half inches, you know, so, that's what I was expecting, but, uh, okay, there's another pack of, uh, shuttlecraft I'd like to get, although I'm not, not entirely certain, they're from the, uh, the TOS era movies, okay, so let's see, 13, 14, 15, 16, so which one do I want to... Saint to Enterprise. Oh, saying to Calvin and a Saint to Enterprise. Okay. Hmm. Which one do I want to do first? Like, do them in numerical order or do them in sequential order? I don't know them in sequential order. They're so tiny. Yeah, I'll just start with what I start with. Let's see. You get this light. Um, there we go. And let's get into this. So we're going to start with the. And the, these don't have uh, individual names. It's just called Transport Shuttlecraft, because that's not totally not confusing. Uh, I believe... Th oh, I did hear metal. The display stands are completely different just because they're so small, so... Um, oh god, I hope it doesn't just, like, sit on the top and that's it. That would be bad. 
if they did that. That'd be bad for me if they did that. Oh god, what have I gotten myself into? Oh, does it just peg in? I hope it pegs in. If it does, oh god, oh god, oh what have I got, oh no, what have I gotten myself into? The shuttle is barely two inches long. So this transport shuttle, or it's a passenger sh shuttle, it says, uh, length of seven meters, active in the 2250s, and assigned USS Enterprise. Uh, this is going to be a problem if, like, I, I know they do their best to, but, uh, yeah, I've already said that. Uh, I know they do their best to avoid, um, uh, s visible screw holes and seam lines and things like that, but, <sighs> okay, and felt bottom and, uh, the, uh, production number. It just says transport shuttle, so shrug. Oh, it's so tiny. It's so tiny. So there is the transport shuttle, and those landing gear are completely pointless because the wings can't move. This is so tiny, I can't even... I can't even get this... Lit. I can't even get it lit from below. So, yeah, I mean, I don't... I'm, I'm not... I'm looking at it on my screen here. It's all fuzzy and shit, so you're not going to be able to see any of it. Hopefully, I've got a couple of pictures I can I can show off. So this is the shuttlecraft, I think, most prominently. Uh, it was seen uh, taking Kirk and McCoy up to the Enterprise, but it's it's seen it's seen a number of times throughout the movie, so that that doesn't make much difference. God, so it's almost like a Hershey's candy bar, a little mini Hershey's candy. Bar. That, that's how big it is. I just want help. There's a bunch of deliberate scuff marks and imperfections in the in the deliberate imperfections in the uh, in the painting on the bottom. She looks like she's been in service for quite a bit now. So I wasn't expecting them to be this tiny. That's that's you know considering this costs a hundred dollars for four of these, and um, there's no way to securely attach this. It just sits on the top and that's it it slides off there's no um yeah, uh, uh, shit the first but not the last maybe I shouldn't have had that snack well, since I can't get the camera any closer okay so these I guess it's kind of necessary because the wings actually do droop down below the bottom of the shuttle. But that said, uh, you would think that they would customize the, the, the clear panel so it would like curve upwards. So at least it could like nestle on the top of the thing. You know, nestle, nestle. You see what I did there. But it doesn't. Um, that's that's an issue. That's a That's a problem. It just sits on the top and there's no... Okay. I wonder if it's yeah, it might be necessary to Oh hello. USS what's that name? Oh, it looks like it's a number rather than a where's a magnifying glass when you need one. Oh it's just USS and then a couple of numbers and that's it, so And there is no diecast anywhere in these. So this is the first Eagle Moss Starships collection where they have no no diecast metal whatsoever. So big old blind spot for the pilot to either side. <sighs> like not like he can see directly to either side and directly forward, but what he can't do is look diagonally to either side. That's so he actually has a blind spot on either side. Hmm. What's the name of that one Mac from Mac Wearing Online? The Piranha? Yeah, the Piranha, which is a little twenty ton OP piece of little shit. The cockpit is very narrow, it's just a little square that you see out of and then there's a tiny slit of a window on either side. But if you actually sit inside of the cockpit it's very difficult to see what's going on around you, so <laughs> folks, this is almost a micro machine. 
This is, think about it for a moment. This is $25. This and the display stand. This is $25 right here with no die cast metal. There's, there's metal on the top here, so on the top of the stand, whatever. And it doesn't even have a way to, like, nest on it. It should, but it doesn't. God, this barely has four pages on it. It actually only has... I guess, you know, it's a shuttle, so there shouldn't be a lot of information in it. So... That's nice. stupid is real. <laughs> I don't laugh at stupid very often, but this is stupid enough to be funny. So ordinarily, <laughs> ordinarily for these larger edition, uh, whatchamacallits, and I usually don't have to talk about this, there's this, what's, what's it called, stand assembly? Yeah, stand assembly. It's like, okay, this is where it's going to fit where it's done, when it's, this is good, where it's I can't see what I'm doing. This is where it's going to fit where it's done, or this, this is where it's going to go. Here's how you attach it, and here's what it looks like when it's done. Okay? They do that. All right. Stand fits over the back of the saucer. Push the engineering hull down into the stand. Push the stand forward over the saucer. Whatever. You, you almost don't even need the, uh, the, the words in there, just the arrows. Like, this is where it's going to go. This is what it looks like as you're attaching it, and this is what it looks like when it's done. You, you don't even have to think about it. I just... And, and, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the instructions say <laughs> you take this flat platform and you just stick it on the top. on the top and it's done I cannot believe they wasted the ink telling us that <laughs> oh my god oh what, 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 what and that's page three no that's page two <sighs> oh, that's neat <laughs> so stupid. Oh, God. <clears throat> oh, they did it wrong. They painted it wrong. Grr. They painted it wrong. Okay. So, and, and, and I don't know, I don't know what kind of, what kind of insert pictures I'm going to have to work with, so I'm just going to have to do it this way. Um, let's see, how does this work? So you've got the the I don't know if they're warp engines. It does I don't think it says it doesn't say I don't know if these are cuz shuttles may have uh pylons on them or they may they might have nacelles, but that doesn't necessarily mean that those are um warp nacelles that they're they're capable of warp power. Usually a nacelle on a shuttle just means that's its engine. That's that's its primary engine, so I don't know if... By the way, why don't they have the landing gear on these? I don't understand that. They should, but they don't. But anyways, um, there's no indication of a... Uh, uh, and, okay, so anyways, there's these little itty-bitty pods, and you can see the one up here, okay? You're looking at the top, and you can see there's one here, and there's one here and this is this is the top view by the way the wings are on the bottom anyways um 
the nacelles have two colors on them. There's kind of a gray and then there's a darker gray, whatever it is. Um, the nozzles at the back of the engine, those are painted dark gray and then the rest of it, and then the, the rest of the nacelle is, is painted gray. <laughs> God damn it, that display stand. Uh, why didn't... Okay. So that's all well and good. But all I have to do is look at this finalized CGI picture here. And I can see that there's a paint there's a painting detail that Eagle Moss did incorrectly. What it should be, it's not just that the back of the nacelle, I'm like I'm going to struggle here to not say warp because I don't I don't know if it's warp capable. I, I doubt it. Warp nacelles are usually a lot bigger. Anyways, it's not just that they, they they did correctly paint the back of the nacelle dark gray, but what they should have done was painted the underside of it as well. There's actually more dark gray on this nacelle than there is the light gray of the rest of the hull. The light gray is only supposed to be across the top half of the nacelle, but the gray is supposed to be, the dark gray is both the back of the, of the, the engine nozzle, whatever it is, and the entire underside. So Eagle Moss screwed up their painting on that alone. This versatile shuttlecraft was used to ferry passengers between a wide range of locations. No shit, Sherlock. During the 2250s in the Kelvin timeline, Starfleet operated a transport shuttlecraft that could be reconfigured for different purposes. These transport shuttles, sometimes known as military shuttles, were often seen leaving starships to conduct short-range missions, and they were also used to ferry passengers between planets, ships, and space stations. The central compartment of the shuttlecraft could be arranged into multiple layouts, depending on how large group it was transporting. One of these layouts featured four rows of seats forming two aisles along the vessel, allowing equipment to be stored between the two middle rows. Another layout had the seats in pairs facing facing forward across two aisles. Error. That was interesting. So this shuttle was used, was seen uh, when Kirk boards it, boards it at the... Uh, um, at the, the the construction facility where the Enterprise is, uh, this is also the shuttle that uh, Captain Pike uh, flies or pilots over to the Narada. Uh, yeah. Oh, apparently this particular one is called the Baradine, or I'm sorry, oh Bar Bardine Bardine. I don't I don't know why it's called that. Uh. Yeah, yeah. And that it's also seen, although it's a different... Oh, it's a different, different, different livery. Uh, with a different livery, this is the same type of shuttle that is seen when uh, Spock is talking to Spock. So it's, it's seen... Th this version seen a couple of times, although the decorations are obviously different for each one. Uh, and it's just... Let's see. There's a whole lot about the... I can't look at that. <laughs> I'm going to start laughing again. So it's just a bunch of screenshots from 2009. 2009. Wait, is this also from 2009? Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, let's see if they actually talk about designing it. They do not talk about designing it. That's disappointing. Although I suppose because it's a shuttle and it's just kind of there and done and it's not highlighted in any particular way, maybe they don't don't need to talk about this particular one. Like, like maybe if you had one of the various shuttlecraft Galileos or maybe one of the runabouts from DS9, they might have a more detailed description. But for this particular one, no, there's no... It's just kind of, this is what it looks like, this is what it does, and these are the moments when you saw it in the movie. Uh, and I'm... F I don't remember if they used a lot of shuttles in Into Dankness. I'm fairly certain they did not in Star Trek Beyond. So... And then there's a really nice, just techno babble stuff on the backs uh, in the on the last page here. So it's only it's only two pages, the whole thing. <clears throat> oh, it's a short range cabin temp and ilum. What is ilum? Illumination maybe? Ilum. It says field coils, but I'm not certain if that's in reference to warp engines or not. It, it doesn't talk about... <laughs> Excuse me. It doesn't talk about whether this is a warp-capable ship or not. 
Certainly all the instances that it's used in 2009, it is not warp cable, or it is not seen using warp drive. And then, finally, oh, it's clear. Nice. So, something that I have not encountered before with Eagle Moss, or something else I have not encountered with Eagle Moss before, is because these are so small, uh, they, they cost way too much money. $25 for this thing. Weren't, uh, weren't those 25? Yeah, the, uh, the standard size ships, the, uh, the, the warp delta and the, uh, what's that called? The, uh, SSM, at both of those were $25. So this shuttle is $25, but there's also something else which I have not shown you yet, which contributes to that cost. So, in addition to all of that, you also get this, you also get this, oh, that feels nice. You also get this clear uh, display card, or whatever it is. Of course, it is, it is semi-transparent. And it's, um, and then you get these two little plastic clips, which you then slot down on either side. So it's removable afterwards, and it's, it's flexible. So, take these little clips, stick them on either side. Is that right? Yes. So you can have this. Ooh. Instantly that friction failed. And you can have this on display behind your tiny, tiny shuttle with its completely pointless, utterly useless display stand. This is your $25. This right here. That's your $25 and the magazine, the, the mini mag, or the, I guess it's a pamphlet, it's not really a magazine, uh, pamphlet to go along with it, so. And the, uh, in case you're wondering what that thing is, what the, the, the card thing is, uh, it's, ju it's just a duplicate of this. So you can look at this, this is where you can look at the details and the individual labeling, but then you've got the card for it, or you've got the, is this Mylar? No, that's not Mylar, it's something else. So, uh, anyways, yeah, that's the first shuttle. Okay, so moving on to the next shuttle, which was looking a bit more, um, how can I put it? It's looking a bit more uh, TOS-esque. It's also a bit, bit, it's a lot bigger than the previous shuttle. This this is a bit more what I was expecting. That passenger shuttle's tiny. Uh, this one also has the same crappy display stand. I'm I'm like like I can't I can't get over how low quality those display stands are. That's just that's that's really pissing me off. Should I go over each and every one of these? Uh, I'll, I'll I'll just broadly say that each of them comes with this this card, this display card, and a couple of clips. I'll just broadly say all four of them come with this. So you know, just just be aware they all have this. I'm assuming. They all kind of show the same things, so I'm, I'm not going to take the time to go through each and every one of them. And if they're replicated on the inside of each, I think, yeah, it's just, yeah, the, the inside of the thing, they, they look this, they all look the same, so I'm not going to take the time to look at the, the top, even, I might not even open these up, whatever. Okay, so this one is called the USS Enterprise Passenger Shuttle. Has the exact same derpy display stand. Ooh, that's held in really well. That's that same old flat panel, which I do not like. No. I do not like that display stand. And you, you could easily mistake all of them because the the labels on the bottom are unique to each shuttle. But if you you know if you just have this then you're unless you flip this over you're not going to know which is which it should like this should be customized to each shuttle just as uh it has been you know to the actual starships so it's i'm i'm a bit i'm a bit confused about that here's again oh this one's off center this is passenger shuttle and no doubt there's some instructions that say you have to oops you have to take this and peg it in just like so. Be careful when you put it in. You actually have to do put some. 
you do need to put some pressure on it. So do not push on the exterior of the tee. Don't do it. Only push it in the center. Only, only ever. Okay. Now this is a bit more appropriately sized to what I thought they would be. This is this is a bit better sized. I mean, that thing, it's a freaking Hershey's bar. It's not small. But this is actual, this is a bit, actually, you know what? Maybe I should... There you go. There's the size comparison. The one that I just opened on the top, or the one that I opened a few minutes ago is on the top, and the one that I just now opened up, the passenger shuttle, is on the bottom. Considering they're both passenger shuttles. So, yeah, that that's disappointing. That's really disappointing. This this is so tiny, I don't understand why. That's really disappointing. So anyways, here's the passenger shuttle, and it, I might actually be able to show you this to you. Because it actually is large enough, I can get it close enough to be fuzzy on screen. This is very much intended to be a uh, TOS inspired shuttle. This this one here, by far. It looks appropriate enough, I like it. Let's see. Uh, the back, does this one have actual, actual? Yeah. This one, the back of the nail cells are, ooh, that's badly painted. Yeah. One of the, one of the bulbs, I guess, one of the domes on the back of the, the port nacelle looks just fine. Like it's supposed to be, that's all painted correctly. But then the blue paint on the back of the, of the, the starboard nacelle is just kind of a, and that's it. It's as if the, it's as if the worker didn't give a shit. That was not painted very well. Hmm. That's noticeable. And again, they have landing pads on the bottom, which are retracted. But this display stand, once again, and even more so because this is a larger sh this is a larger replica than the previous one. It it just it just slips right off. So I can understand why you don't put a hole in the bottom or something like that. Oh, there's a hole right there. Oh, neat! I thought it was just some black paint. Okay, whatever, whatever. That's part of the design. Um, yeah, these should hang. These should the 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 transparent part should curve around the shuttle in some fashion. I don't. I do not like that. No. And then there's some stuff on the top. And on the bottom. Kind of dull, kind of boring. Not a lot. Of, not a lot of detail there. So. There's some very thin, very small numbers right there that I don't, I don't easily identify. Very hard to read. I'm surprised how small the printing is, though. That they, the the decal or whatever it is that they put on there. There's even very fine printing above the individual passenger windows. That is surprising. Oh, it has headlights on it. Yeah, this this is the most TOS of the sh of the shuttles. I say, actually, it kind of reminds me of the the shuttle we saw in uh, Star Trek V, the Galileo or whatever it was. That's that's what this reminds me of. Because obviously you have that hatch in the back right there. So, you know, what? I don't need those. Uh, I don't think I need those those display stands. I th I think I'm probably just going to keep them. In yeah. I'm just going to keep the cards. I'm going to keep these in the, the thing here. So they'll rattle a little bit more every time I open it up. I've got the music to um, Godzilla King of the Monsters, which which I've had been playing for the last month or so. Got that stuck in my head right now. Which there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so passenger shuttle. Uh, it's a more to er, more more M O O R E. It's the more type shuttlecraft. Length of 12 meters. Oh. Oh, so this is actually seven meters, and that's tw wait. Are these in scale with each other? That's very surprising, because the whole thing I thought about Eagle Moss saying that these are not in scale with each other. Hmm. Okay, so it's it's, it's so uh, this this is 12 meters long so and and 12 times three because one meter one yard so 12 12 meters times three is uh, 36 so it's 36 feet long. 
Is that right? 12 times 3. Yeah. Yeah, 24. No, because this Moore type shuttle was used to transport Starfleet personnel between star bases, ships, and training grounds. The USS Enterprise NCC-1701 deployed a variety of different passenger shuttlecraft during its lifetime, including the Moore type shuttle. The Moore type shuttlecraft could be adapted for different missions, but was most frequently used to ferry passengers and supplies between locations such as... This shuttlecraft, which has echoes of the Galileo type shuttlecraft... Is that in canon? Is there a Galileo type? I don't know. Uh, has small wings on both sides of the body. These were attached to warp nacelles positioned towards the bottom of the ship. It also featured two impulse drives, one on each side near the top of the vessel. A so, what? Those are impulse engines, really? They're not painted. Two impulse drives, one on each side near the top of the vessel. I don't see any impulse drives. If, if they're here, I don't see them. Unless Eagle Moss didn't paint them. I don't know, because... God damn it, stand assembly! <laughs> oh, I see why they call it a Moore type. Okay, because one of the shuttles on screen is, is labeled US, or is labeled the Moore. Uhura persuades Spock to assign her to the USS Enterprise instead of the USS Farragut before she boards a shuttle headed for the starship. Was that, um... No, I'm not going to get into that. The Gilliam? Gilliam? I don't know. The, the Gilliam soars in the skies above San Francisco on its way to the USS Enterprise, except that that's not this type. Instead, it is this type. So, I don't know why they show that picture in this thing. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Wait, is there another? No, that's it. These are all very short. <clears throat> okay, so I, I think the main difference between uh, the uh, the passenger shuttle and the transport shuttlecraft is that this is sublight only, but this has actual warp nacelles, so this can actually go to warp warp speeds so okay all right good to know that's probably probably why it's bigger too so okay and number 15 or shuttle 15 is the medevac shuttle oh wait i said i wasn't gonna open those okay again stupid display stand design should have wrapped around oh wow this one actually has a fin on the top Ooh, aren't we getting fancy You know, all these shuttles come from uh, looking at the Enterprise compared to, or the, the Church Prize compared to these shuttles. These shuttles are very utilitarian. They're not the same kind of Art Deco kind of look, which which doesn't bother me, but considering that's what they were aiming for with these Starfleet ships, maybe it's to say that, like, maybe, uh, you know, like, these shuttles are not as advanced, I'm guessing. So, like, they don't um, they don't, um, they don't look slick, or as, you know, Art Deco, 1960s sci-fi-ish. Maybe that's what they're trying to say, I don't know. So here's the Medivac shuttle. Ooh, this has die cast in it. Does, does the passenger shuttle? No, it does not. The passenger shuttle does not, but the Medivac definitely has diecast metal in the belly. I take it back. This one, it's interesting. This one, actually, this one, like, okay, all right. This is even more of, no pun intended, this is even more of kind of a TOS feeling because of the, 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 the doors on either side, it's the same on, the, on both sides. But also the way the the window on the front is shaped. How close can I get and not make it fuzzy? So there's the the black window on the front. This feels even more like a TOS shuttlecraft, with the exception of this little fin on the top, which is which is an interesting touch, by the way. I should point out. It's like mm, okay. Um, compared to um, let's see what's on the back. 
Yeah, this feels a lot more like TY shuttlecraft compared to um, the passenger shuttle, which now now that I now that I look at it, now they compare the two, I would say this is TOS inspired, but this is a little more of Star Trek V: The Final Frontier kind of inspired shuttlecraft because it's got uh, those those raised raised bumps along the back or the, the kind of humps along the, the the back of the ship or whatever it is. Um, I would almost say that this is is more of a um, Star Trek V type shuttlecraft, the Galileo and whatever the other one was, um, compared to this, which is TOS inspired. So it's, it's, an, it's an interesting compare and contrast. It also does not have windows on the side, which that one does, but this one does not. So just like TOS, it does not have the windows on the side, but it does for the doors. So. Oh my gosh, these nacelles! Holy crap! Look how narrow that look how narrow that is right there. Uh, where am I pointing? Look how narrow that is right there. That's I thought it was the entire length of the wing, but no, it's just that I thought the whole length of it. Oh, let's see, how can I? You see, I thought it was this whole length of wing or whatever it is right here, this pylon, but no, it's actually that little bit right there. Wow! Wait, <gasps> a production error. <gasps> There's a production error. Oh, somebody screwed up. Oh, no, Eagle Moss, you screwed up. No. No, you screwed up. Oh, no. Oh, okay, so I've, I've got a production error on mine. It's probably like the plastic was so thin. Yeah, yeah, mine's a production error. Okay, so, oh, oh, all right, so I will, I'm going to write Eagle Moss about this. Maybe I can get a replacement for this one. So you can see here, this uh, this pylon you can see it's it's pretty wide, but this one is just a tiny little bit. And it turns out this gap right here is actually, it is on the other side, but there's no gap. I guess it's a case of the plastic, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. The plastic is so thin that maybe it didn't inject properly. It didn't, it didn't appear properly. And unfortunately, this particular model did not get um, as as it was going through quality control. As they were they were looking it over, looking at all the details. It's 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 such a finite mistake that maybe this one just slipped right past them. So yeah, I will I will write Eagle Moss about this one. That's that's definitely something worth excuse me worth writing about. But still, um, nice shuttle. That gap, where uh, the gap in the uh, the thing that I just pointed out right there, that is supposed to be painted dark gray, and it's very much not painted light gray. Or it's not painted dark gray. Yeah, so, hmm. grungy looking thing, which is fine. No impulse engines to speak of. Although, to be fair, uh, TOS Galileo, you didn't know whether it could... It, it could travel at warp speeds, it's just like warp 1, maybe warp 2. I don't, I don't think they ever said on screen how fast exactly that they could go in... Um, yeah, in, in TOS. But uh, I'm guessing this one is warp capable, so... Oh yeah, that nacelle's flexing in ways that the other one's very much not. Yeah, I'm going to write to them about that. Kelvin type shuttle, uh, length of 9 meters, active in 2233, assigned to the USS Calvin. So this is the shuttle that uh, James Kirk was born on. Which is probably what they're going to end up saying. So, yeah. Oh no, there they, they showed the back of the shuttle. Hang on. There's the front. There's the front. Oh no, they show the front front back and side. Top side front. Back top side. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Medevac shuttle. This instantly recognizable shuttle was adapted to offer emergency support in, off in often dangerous situations. Star Trek Metal Oh, I see what they're saying by impulse engines. Okay. Impulse thrusters were contained at the top of the vessel, along with inertial dampeners, plasma accelerators, and flow regulators. And there was a fin on the dorsal side for additional move maneuverability. Useful during evacuations or other emergencies. Why do you need to bring up the dorsal? You don't, you don't need to say that. Just, just don't. Oh, there's no landing gear on it. Hmm. So this one is is supposed to land directly on the on the the nacelles. Hmm. That's an interesting change from the previous one. Okay, so if those are impulse engines or impulse thrusters, then where are the impulse thrusters on this one? I don't see them. Hmm. Passenger shuttle doesn't have any impulse engines on the back. Not not the way it is on the uh, on the medevac shuttle. It's not. And a whole bunch of shots from the Kelvin sequence. So yeah. and you can actually see one of the the Narada's torpedoes right there, which is which is a little bit of an Easter egg, some Easter egg goodie right there. You can actually see one of those things. Kind of sort of detail, kind of sort of. Yeah. You can see how close it was to wiping out the Kirk family. I don't know why they showed this shot. This is them. They're they're wheeling um, Kirk's mother to the shuttle because there's a shuttle door and there's the two. Uh, med techs. And there's a bunch of shuttles escaping from the, the Narada. And yeah, that's what that is. No surprise there. Okay. Yeah. So this last one is called the USS Enterprise Warrant Shuttle. Uh, it's the Takayama type shuttle. Uh, length of 14 meters, active in 2250s, and assigned to USS Enterprise. Big surprise. It's there. And this one also does... Oh, it's actually very similar to the Medivac. It also has a dorsal fin, and it also has diecast metal. Hmm. And it also has the stupid display stand. All you have to do is just make a curve around the sides or something. Have it, have it wrapped around the, the pylons. You know, that, that's all you had to do. That's all you had to do, and it, and it doesn't for some stupid reason. Warrant class shell. I don't recognize that one off the top of my head. Active in the 2250s. I don't know this one off the top of my head. I mean, I don't. I, don't, I, I mean, I should recognize the 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 what was it called? The passenger shuttle, and I recognize the med shuttle, and I recognize. Well, I mean, kind of vaguely. I mean, they're so they're on screen for so little. It doesn't. They're on screen for so little. It doesn't really register which one is which. So I'm not entirely certain what this one is supposed to be. And the just a stupid display stand. I don't understand why they did that. Warrant shuttle. Maybe it's like warrant type? Or... Uh. So here's the Taka, uh, Takayama type shuttle. Which also has a little fin on the top, although this is not a repaint of the medevac shuttle. It's not the same thing. This is a completely different design. And the belly of the of the shuttle once again is die cast metal. But the nacelles are Oh, they really? Oh, the back of the nacelles have uh, transparent uh, transparent blue plastic. That's surprising. Are they inserts? Oh, the entire nozzle, the back nozzle of each nacelle uh, is 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 fitted on, I think. It's difficult to tell. Yeah, I think it's just glued into place. So the whole end nozzle is molded in transparent blue, but then they paint it gray to match the rest of the hull. So only the back of the nozzle is actually, actually, actually. Oh, I bet this is the shuttle. Without without looking at this, I bet this is the shuttle, um, where um 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 um. Uh, where at the at the oh shit what's the name of that planet? It's it's a ripoff. It's oh uh, what's that planet that's right next to Vulcan? Which you know there were no other planets in the Vulcan system. I'm just saying. Um, Delta Vega. I wonder if this is the Delta Vega shuttle, where um, 
Kirk and Spot Spot Kirk Kirk and Spock meet with uh, with Scotty for the first time. I bet that's what this shuttle is. This is the one that has the the long range, or the 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 the, the trans warp shuttle. I think that's what this is. Now that I think about, because it's like how many shuttles are there? Variations are there? This might be this might be that one. <laughs> Three. Oh, they're actually indented. Hmm. Indents for the lights on the front, but then they never painted the lights. Hmm. So this is very similar to the medevac shuttle. It's just that like the nacelles are further back. So. Hmm. <clears throat> and there it sits on its stupid little display stand. That I totally don't care about. The Takayama-type shuttlecraft was one of the largest shuttles in the Kelvin timeline. Really now. Oh, 14 meters, 9 meters, 12 meters. Oh yeah, I guess it would be. So I guess these are all kind of in scale with each other. Kind of. Is it really the longest one? Yeah, it might be. It's, it's close. It's about the same size as the passenger shuttle, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, the Takayama type sh uh, type passenger shuttles were used by Starfleet during the early 2250s and late 2260s. Uh, the build of the Takayama type shuttlecraft was similar to the earlier Kelvin type shuttle, the the, the medevac shuttle, although it was considerably larger in size. Like other shuttles, the Takayama type shuttles were equipped with two nacelles that sat on the bottom of two uh, two of the shuttle's impulse drives. Wait, really? Uh, no. Oh, so it has... It has four impulse engines on it? Whatever. Okay, so, so it's got two impulse engines. Yeah, it's got two impulse engines at the top, at the back. There's two impulse engines right there. It's those little vents. And then there's two more. That's what those blue things are, apparently. Those are also impulse engines. Kelvin timeline. Whatever. Kelvin timeline. Uh, the engine was located in an aft compartment, separately from the cock separated from the cockpit by hatch. Which I don't know what. Takayama type shuttles also featured three retractable landing gear and a navigational deflector in the nose of the vessel. All right. All right. Shit. The shuttle is from Into Dankness. Well, so much for that idea of being the the shuttle that uh, that Scotty built the uh, the 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 transporter, the transwarp. The FTL transporter, what's it called? Transwarp beam? Transwarp. Transporter. Which is totally not a mouthful. Uh, or it's seen Kurtzman, just saying. Well, now I'm curious if... Uh, hmm. Let me look. Uh, where would I find that? Would it be Memory Alpha or X Asterisk? Let's try X Asterisk. Okay, so it looks like... Yeah, there were two of these we're seeing... The name Copernicus of Scottish Shuttle comes from. Okay, so yeah, this does, this does indeed come from uh, Into Dankness. Damn. So when they say Takayama type, um, it looks like it's the the name of the shuttle itself. So there's a shuttle of this type that's called the Warrant, and then there's another one called the Takayama. Just for whatever reason, uh, Starship's collection is labeling it as a Takayama type. When there's apparently like two or three different versions of this. There's, there's two or three versions of the same shuttle, so... Okay, but what I want to know is... Okay, yeah, so the shuttle that, that Scotty was, was using was this one. These shuttles called military shuttles on production sketches are commonplace in the years 2255 and 2258. They belong to the complement of Starfleet Academy, of the Enterprise, of other starships, and of the Delta Vega outpost, which is the one I was talking about. Uh, there existed in different interior layouts with seating facing forward, 
facing inward or with transporter pads. Okay, so this is what I was thinking of. Okay. Damn, I've got a... Uh, I have a... Um, I've got an Into Dankness reference. Damn. Which, I mean, it, it's not that it doesn't look bad, but now it's just the stench of, of Into Dankness. The stench of Dankness has has now colored this thing. Just saying, so, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, it looks nice and all, it just... Uh, into Dankness. It does look nice. Yeah. <laughs> the pat there's an actual printed pattern on the or maybe those are super tiny decals of white dots across the underside of the nose. That I don't know how well you can see those indents right there. Those indents are covered with little with rows of little white dots. So that's supposed to be a thing, I guess. The uh Yeah, nacelles are larger but narrower on the uh, on the medevac. But I'm looking at the I'm looking at the the pylons. Yeah, the pylons are similar. So don't step on the don't step on the nacelles. Really? Then why'd you put the door right next to the nacelles? Just saying. Okay. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not as awake as I thought I was. Oh, there's a little production error right there, right next to that door. A door that is not a door, or whatever. And it also has a little fin on the top. So I'm wondering if maybe this is like a repurpose of like they took one of these from 2009 and they changed and they they. Um, uh, redecoed it, like moved the nacelles and they moved the uh, the pylons back. So I'm guessing, like maybe they extended the length of it or something. So that maybe they're like the same. I'm guessing, repurposed something like that. <sighs> I keep waiting to bump into one of these little shuttles on their non-existent display p display thingies. Hmm. So yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, email Eagle Moss about uh, the medevac shuttle um, yeah okay so uh, and I also got those on discount as well ordinarily they sell for like a hundred dollars that that set of four shuttles ordinarily sells for a hundred dollars and I got it for 80 so ju just under eighty dollars so um, okay I didn't know about the warrant they don't they don't describe uh, which shuttle comes from which, so whenever. Yeah, I guess I didn't have as much energy tonight as I thought I would. It's like I've got a weird sleep schedule right now. It's just totally effing around with me. So, um, so okay, I, I think this is my favorite of the batch, of of the four. I think this is my favorite medical shuttle. I think you'll you'll gain some re reputation uh, after I get a fixed version. So yay. Um, yeah, for the most part. Not bad. I'm I'm fairly satisfied with what's going on here. Uh, that Warren shuttle, Takayama, that, that pissed me off. But whatever. That's only only because of association. The shuttle looks. It, I mean, it just it visually it looks fine. Like whatever. Just it comes from into darkness. That's why I don't like it. So, um, I'm surprised how small that passenger shuttle though is. You, I would honestly have thought it'd be the same size as this, maybe even larger. Whatever. Um. Yeah, I think I think I've kind of said everything that I can at this point. Although there's more that I there's a lot more that I could say about the Kelvin timeline, like the Enterprise and all the stuff like that. But in terms of Eagle Moss, uh, I think I'm done mining or or, or pulling from uh, the Kelvin timeline. Um, there's, with the exception of this one shuttle that I that I accidentally got, you know, this, this warrant type. With the exception, the sole exception of this, uh, I'm not going to get anything from uh, from Into Darkness. There's there's nothing in that movie I want. 
Nothing whatsoever. Um, uh, the church prize was slightly modified for its appearance in Into Darkness, but honestly, it's it's so such minor stuff. They probably wouldn't justify making another one of those, so I'm not, I'm not going to worry about you know. I want them to make this version. Um, <clears throat> what else did they do? I'm drawing a blank all of a sudden. Uh, yeah, there's there's nothing from Indedactus that I want to get because don't care. Uh, and the uh, the USS Vengeance uh, is 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 basically the church prize with a bunch of cardboard cutouts attached to it, spray painted black. Somebody accidentally stomped right through the middle of the saucer section, and they're like, "Hey, that's cool. Let's just put a big old hole in the center because why not?" And let's make it twice as big as the already 700 meters long, 725 meters um, church prize. And I, I don't, I don't care about the vengeance. I don't. If it's meant to be stealthy, it didn't work. If it's meant to have thicker armor, it didn't work because the shields are what provide the the the, the defense of the ship, not the hull plating necessarily. So um, that's not happening. Uh, it's it's not even. And I'll say it again here, you can only mess with the proportions and locations of the the, the Matt Jeffrey's original Enterprise design before it starts becoming not an Enterprise. And the uh, vengeance is that. Uh, everything's kind of the wrong shape. And uh, honestly, I, I can't, I don't, like, I, I don't care about the vengeance. And the not Klingon bird of prey uh, is, you, you know, the, the the sad thing about it is, like, I might have been interested that it was a Klingon ship. All they had to do was, like, they could have called it the Raptor class, so they could have called it, uh, um, I don't know, they could have given it some sort of weird Klingon name that's like a bird of prey or something like that. They could have called it the Hawk class or the Eagle class or anything like that, in, translated into Klingonese, of course. Uh, and, and I would have had no problems whatsoever, but the fact that they called it the Klingon Bird of Prey and it's absolutely nothing like its predecessor just pissed me off all the more. On the other hand, there's a lot of things about that movie that really pissed me off. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not, there, there's nothing in Into Dankness that I'm, I'm going to be getting, so I don't care. Um, I already got what I wanted from Star Trek Beyond in the form of the Calvin, no, I'm kidding, it's the Franklin. Um, that, that's kind of all I want from that movie. I don't want any of the swarm ships because, like, they're there and gone and I don't really care. Um, there were no shuttles used, uh, and, and I hate the modification that they made to the church prize, turned it into the Hargreaves prize, and I hate that thing, so I'm, I'm not gonna get it. And, and there is a, uh, um, in Eagle Moss special edition version, you know, $50 of the, of the, 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 the Hargreaves Sean Hargraves modified Enterprise. I'm not going to touch that thing. No fucking way. Uh -uh. Um, and as far as 2009 is concerned, I kind of want like a 12-inch a or, you know, 10-inch, 12-inch Narada. I kind of want one, but I also kind of don't. Because I'm not, I'm not real sure how I feel about the Narada going on eight and a half years later. Like... It's supposed to be a mining ship, but it doesn't behave like a mining ship, but it, it, it's also ridiculously overpowered, but you have to read the comic book to understand why it is the way it is, and just there's kind of kind of the whole function of the Narada I don't like. I mean, it, it looks neat, it looks mysterious, if it wasn't a Romulan ship. What's this big, dank, scary um, bleh, thing? It's, it, it, has, it has a very organic feel to it. So, like, I wouldn't be opposed to... I wouldn't really be opposed to a, you know, a, a 10 or 11-inch um, Narada. That that, w that wouldn't bother me too much. But on the other hand, it's so thin and spindly and spiky that Eagle Moss might actually be troubled. Like, they might not be able to recreate it in a physical form. It, it might not work. So, um, so as far as like other ships and stuff from 2009, maybe arguably, yeah, I would like to get the Narada, but I'm not hugely driven to get it. Um, 
Uh, but 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 the only other thing I can think of. Let me think. 2009 stuff. Um, there isn't a whole heck of a lot because there's shuttles and there's also shuttles and I don't. What really? Uh, the other ships that appeared in 2009. Um, I don't care. I've got the Kelvin, uh, or or at least the other Starfleet ships. I've got the Kelvin, so I don't I don't really need any of the others. Um, kind of the, not rag Netflix, but the other Starfleet ships, I don't really, I'm not, I'm not excited for any of those. Uh, there is a jellyfish. They did make the jellyfish as a, as a special edition. Um, I don't care. I don't care. It's, it's not a bad, it's not that I dislike the design, just not enough to get it, so. Um, let's see, I'm looking at X Astra, uh, Sciencia, Sciencia, Sciencia. Uh, the Newton type, no. The Mayflower, actually, Mayflower is kind of nice, kind of. Kobayashi Maru, they do have a Kobayashi Maru uh, replica, but I'm I'm not going to be getting that. I don't I don't like it enough. As far as I'm aware, there are no plans to make uh, the Enterprise A from the uh, from from the end of the 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 the, the very end of, of, of uh, Star Trek Beyond. And even if they did, I wouldn't get it. So, uh, Armstrong class, no. Yeah, so, so there are no other ships from, from... The only other ship, and it's not even really a ship that I would want to get, would be the um, uh, the, the space station. The, 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 the space dock from uh, 2009. You know the big six, you know, big sphere with a with a bunch of of, of discs around it. Uh, I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind them making like a you know, ten or like maybe twelve inch would be just fine, just because it's so big and the the detail would be significant enough. Because if you make it like ten inches, uh, you would lose a lot of detail, and you'd pro you'd probably be threatening structural stability issues with the pods with the with the 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 what you call it's around there, so it'd probably have to be you know twelve inches whatever it is just to justify the the structural strength of the replica, you know, and even then, they probably wouldn't do it. So, I don't think there are any worker bees or anything like that that was seen in two thousand nine or into Dankness. So, um, so yeah, I mean that's it's it's kind of it. There's, there isn't anything else from the Kelvin timeline of interest. This, this is pretty much it. Um, maybe the space, maybe the, maybe the space dock from 2009, and maybe the Narada. Well, no, yeah, definitely I would get a, uh, uh, you know, like I said, if it was big enough, sure, I'd go for the space dock from 2009. But the Narada, uh, I don't know. I'd have, I'd, I'd probably have to see it first to decide whether I wanted to get it or not. So, but yeah, that's it. In, in as far as me getting uh, Kelvin timeline stuff, and and unless by some stroke of stupidity, uh, the fourth Kelvin timeline gets uh, fourth Kelvin timeline movie gets made, which at this point it's getting more and more likely that won't happen, especially in the wake of the pandemic and that Viacom CBS doesn't have a lot of money to play around with right now, they probably won't make uh, a fourth Kelvin Timeline movie. That's probably not going to happen. I've been hearing rumors for uh, at least, you know, four months or whatever it is now through through the, the, the sources, and uh, the Kelvin Timeline's pretty much dried up at this point, and, and they know it too. Um even though I enjoyed Star Trek Beyond, and even though I am bittersweet about 2009, uh, most people, most Trekkers, most other Trekkers reject uh, the Kelvin timeline outright. So even though I make exceptions for it, my lone exception is not enough to say, oh, I'm, uh, you know, is not enough for CBS Viacom to make a fourth Kelvin timeline movie. So they're 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 not going to do that. So that's the other reason why I picked up these four shuttles and the and the church press because it's like, you know, they're probably going to disappear once all the once the licensing from Bad Robot and Secret Hideout disappears, all of that's going to disappear. You know, all of all the replicas and everything they they won't be legally they won't be able to sell them anymore. So so that's kind of the main reason why why I picked these up kind of kind of sort of last minute, but not also they were on sale. So yeah, I can do that too. Whatever. 
Hmm. Not quite the way I would have done it, but not bad. Not bad. I like the shuttles. Shuttles are nice. Shuttles are good. I can I can live with those. Although that one passenger shuttle's kind of half-assed. Like, let's just put some griblies on it and call it good. So, eh. I think that's all I have to say on the matter. I'm dragging this exit out way too long. And so with that, this is AVNet4A saying, I really need a haircut. How was that?